All right, so I've got some fresh targets up down here, and uh, I'm going to leave you down here while I take some shots so you can actually see and really get a grasp of the impact. Uh, I'm, I have uh, the seven inch target on the small bullet box. I'm going to shoot that. Uh, I'm going to try to hit that dead center, and then I'll go for some of the bigger targets, but I'm going to try to hit these targets that spin around because this this one is so cockeyed and crooked because well this one too because of that gun that those are actually pretty thick compared to like these flat ones that have been sh you know shot right through and bent all over the place uh, i've broken all the magnets that i glued onto that thing even these big steel things that i welded on they used to spring back up a couple of them got knocked completely off uh, the gun's got tremendous power uh, that's not all from that gun but that gun has more power than any of them so i'm gonna i'm gonna shoot at the small target first the seven inch then i'll shoot a couple of those and then i'll go for some of the bigger ones up top and then i'll bring you back and do a summary of the gun
I had already had it zero because you know I was hitting pretty much dead center in the beginning, and I, I was able to hit the small targets from fifty yards. But the uh, the the changes in the changes in uh, in in power, the adjustments in power uh, make a big difference in your point of impact. So. I had to, I, I finally compensated for it at, at that target after getting a bunch low and, and all over the place. And then I, I adjusted the scope and, and got on target. Um, but, uh, so the gun is, this is for an honest review as if I was gonna, you know, watch this before I bought it. And um, I, I love the gun overall. What I don't like is that misfiring thing that it's doing where I feel like one I pull the trigger one time and it's not it's not firing it sounds like it's half firing and then the next shot I get like a double burst and I don't know what's doing that because it's got the same pressure it's regulated you know through the, even through what it, it's sharing with the 6.8 liter it's got they've both got 225 bar Right now, it's got uh, well, about 200 bar now, but uh, is there still any, yeah, there's a couple rounds in there. Let's see if it does it. it. It wasn't doing it towards the end. It was almost. It almost sounded like it was out of ammo, but it wasn't out of ammo. And then the sec the next shot, I would get like a double burst of air. I don't know if that's something to do with the. I'm sure it's something that can be fixed, but that's the only thing that I don't like so far. The trigger is just something you have to get used to. The trigger has the whole first stage. I'll show you real quick. The whole first stage is almost like free floating. It's you just when you pull it, it, it just goes right back to here. It just that's your whole first stage. And then when you get to here, that's when you actually want to be on target. And, you know, because that's when you're actually gonna get the action. And then you have also a safety here. Let me try this. Purge this, rather. And then there's another safety on the back here. So you, yeah, I mean, I just leave that on semi all the time. And if you get a 30 caliber, it'll have full automatic also. But I just leave that on semi all the time. And I use this safety here because fire is right in your path of the trigger. So when you put the safe, it's out of your way. So that's an easy way to remember. And then this is an overbore bipod that can be used as an underbore, but I would like to put it on the top of the bore on this gun. The only problem is that my scope is too big. I don't think I'll be able to do it even if I move it forward and I don't really want to move it forward. But anyways, um, maybe I'll switch it with a different gun, but uh, with a different scope on a, off a different gun. But the gun overall is amazing. It's it's really all it's cracked up to be. The only, the only quirk is I have to find out what that is, but I could see this thing taken down like maybe even a bear. I mean, it's, it's deer for sure. You can hunt deer with this. It, it's, it's better than a real gun. It, it's because first of all, you're paying two bucks a round for five, five, six rounds. Second of all, you have a limit on how many of them you can buy. You can't make them yourself They're like this. I mean, well, I guess you can, but you're not going to get a full metal jacket making them yourself. It just, it, this is this is honestly a, a better avenue because you have a tremendous amount of power. No, you don't have 3,000 feet per second, but you have 300 pounds of energy, and that's going to kill any any animal that you're hunting humanely, and you know, or any target shooting that you're doing. This will be a good long range gun because of the power of it and and the the weight of the projectiles that this shoots. This has a long enough cavity here that you could probably put, these are 100 grains, and I'll show you the, the slug next to the cavity. And these are like a point, a more pointed slug. <clears throat> and it's a, it's a little bit more than half. So that you could, without the point, without them being so pointy, you could easily put a 200 grain slug in here. And a 200 grain slug, 
at a thousand feet per second, which I'm sure this can get to with the 200 because I can get well over that with these. Maybe 950, 900, but the energy will be like 320. I, I mean, I, I'm estimating, I haven't put that big of a slug in it yet. I will when I get the re replacement um, die for the press for the 357. But in short, the gun is a beast as far as power. If you want a really powerful borderline big bore gun, I mean, uh, 357, I guess, is considered to be a big bore. My opinion, it, it's it's a, it's a big bore to me because, you know, I, I usually go for more high precision, like, uh, it, and that's usually 22, 25, 30 caliber. So this is the biggest size that I shoot. I don't shoot anything 45 or anything like that unless it's a handgun or, or a rifle. But I don't have all the air guns I stay in this caliber range. So that's the biggest press dies that I have. They actually don't make a die bigger than 35 anyway. But I don't, I never had a gun bigger than that that I wanted to die for it. So, and the gun's fairly, I mean, it's not, it's not heavy. It's, it's, it's definitely doable if you put a sling on this to carry it around with you in the woods. You know, put your scope caps down, your bipod up, and I'm really hoping I can figure out a way to get this up on the top because a gun with this kind of power would really benefit from an, from an overboard. I had this on my impact as an overboard, but it was actually affecting my point of impact because that is such a precision gun. Having it on the top, even though it does have a tension barrel, which I did tensioning myself, it's not the FX tension barrel. I actually bought that and after install while installing it well after install while uninstalling it really because I installed it and I tried it and it was it was less accurate than it, the gun was without it to, for me I, I know people have had good results I didn't um, so I, I took it off and while taking it off I realized that I could tap the threads on the end the end thread piece of the shroud a little deeper and then I could thread that shroud down to the clamp which the clamp that comes with the tension barrel kit with the carbon fiber sleeve or shroud rather is the exact same clamp that's already on the gun so it's pointless to even change it when you get it so I I, ju I just threaded that left the same clamp but tightened it all the way with the o-ring you know put some silicone oil on it same thing on the o-ring and the shroud because you know you it's going to be tight so when you're sliding it off you're going to have to struggle with it so just lubricate all the seals and uh then tighten down the clamp after you tighten the set screw anyways i'll do this in another video i don't know why i'm going through the whole thing now but this gun is a beast i haven't gotten into modifying it at all i honestly don't think i'm going to because there's not there's no need to there's really not this is just a badass 357 and that's what it's meant to be and that's what i bought it for and that's what i'm using it for i'm not, I'm not being paid by them they didn't they didn't uh, you know give me this gun or compensate me for this gun to do a review or anything of that sort i bought this with my own money because i enjoy this as a hobby and that's why i have all these guns and all this equipment not because i do this professionally or semi-professionally or anything don't even want to be professional doing it I you know I do this because I enjoy it um, so anyways my, my opinion is completely unbiased in any way so I'm giving you advice as if I were talking to myself before I bought the gun thank you